Very good. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Jane Irrigation Training Series. I'm your host, Richard Restucia, and today we're going to be talking about the best sprinkler solutions for nurseries and containers. You know, a while back, about a month ago, we talked about emitter line or emission device choices for indoor growing and nurseries, but and, and we talked about the big selection uh, available in those. And then, then Michael Pippen was saying, you know, we didn't even touch sprinklers yet. And sprinklers add a, another dimension. Uh, they're sometimes very much needed. And the thing is, with all this variety, again, we're trying to help you figure out what is the best way to water your plants in a nursery situation, or those of you that are growing a lot of plants in containers, which is happening more and more these days, we want you to know what options are available and what the best option is for you, especially when you consider the labor involved uh, as, and, as well as the health of, uh, of your plants. So uh, like I mentioned, Michael Pippen is taking us down this uh, journey today. You know, Michael Pippen's been involved in the agricultural industry for his entire life. He's worked in irrigation for a long time. He worked with the Education Committee, with the Irrigation Association, even led that committee for a while. Uh, he's very committed to teaching and helping people really understand what they're doing in irrigation. And, you know, this is really refreshing to see somebody uh, so committed to that and so committed to doing it right. And I think that is really uh, an important uh, part of what makes Michael uh, such a great water manager and also a great rep to his customers. So uh, anyway, if you're lucky enough to be one of those customers, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, Michael, thank you and, uh, and, and welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I yeah, appreciate the uh, invitation as always, Richard. Uh, and you're 100% right. We were about halfway through putting that last webinar together and it dawned on me that I hadn't even talked about overhead or sprinkler irrigation. And I thought this, this is gonna be too much. We can't put it, put it in at this point. It was too late and too much content. So let's just follow up with that uh, a previous talk where we talked a lot about you know single point emission devices. Um, and let's talk a little bit more about our overhead or our sprinkler irrigation solutions um, because I, I really think that, you know, at, at, at Jane, we, we really are primarily a, a drip irrigation company. That's what we're known for. That's what we put a lot out in the field, but we also have a, a lot of other products and uh, especially in the sprinkler, um, sprinkler, uh, market, uh, product line. Um, some of it is relatively old technology, technology, but there has been quite a few improvements made. We're, we're better at it, um, even if we haven't necessarily changed a lot of design criteria. And I think you could also make the argument that these overhead and sprinkler uh, product lines are some of the most versatile product lines in, mm -hmm. in the industry. Um, they're, they can be used in a lot of different applications. Um, they can handle water quality issues that sometimes other methods cannot. Um, they can often be relatively cost effective because they don't have some of these other components that are required and, and some other systems um, and, and designed properly, they can be not only efficient, but, but also effective irrigation, uh, irrigation tools. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to, we're going to going to kind of show you some other, other product lines uh, beyond the drip irrigation uh, products to, that could, you know, help you in your nursery and container application. Yeah. So Mike, I have a quick question before we get started. Um, and that is this, if I think about my weekend, okay, what am I doing Saturday? Nothing. Then I'm going to install emitters. What am I doing this Saturday? I got this, that, and the other thing going on and three other projects. I'm going with sprinklers. I always think that the sprinkler is going to be a faster installation. Uh, and I always think too that even though it might be faster, it's not going to be as efficient. Are either two of those myths correct? <laughs> Well, I guess in everything that they can be, but they don't have to be. Um, you know, a lot of times your your sprinklers are, are going to require a little more infrastructure. Uh, we'll show a little bit of those reasons why. Uh, but you um, don't necessarily, you know, um, uniformity is, um, you know, what we would often think of a drip system of being a more uniform system. That doesn't mean that it's any more or less effective, right? You can have a uniform system 
and still not uh, be as effective with your irrigation method. So, so there, there is a little bit of truth to that, but it doesn't mean that it's still not the best um, product selection. You could say an analogy that, that may or may not work all the time, but you know, there, there are different types of vehicles, right? You have a pickup truck or you have an electric car, right? Well, the pickup truck is not gonna be the most efficient in terms of fuel, but if you're hauling two by fours, then it's it's probably a better better selection. And so that's you know that's maybe not a, a real fair shake to the sprinkler. You know I don't want to downplay how efficient that those can be because they can be very um, efficient. But that would be a, a similar analogy. Yeah, that is a really good analogy. I like that. So thank you. And I do want to remind everybody we've got the Q and A open and the chat. So if you've got a question or you want to make a comment. Put them in there and you know people have been asking good questions we've been rewarding with some uh, nice jane apparel so uh look for uh an email from us asking you uh what you want so all right michael let's get started yeah so i like this jumping off point last time we started about asking these questions you know that what do we need to know to pick this device because there are so many out there right we don't want to necessarily take a device and try to push it into application we want to understand the application and try to See what the best selections are or what those options are and so the questions you need answers for in an overhead irrigation system are very different than what you'd have for a drip irrigation system we talked a lot in the drip about what kind of media how big the pot was those type of things um and and an overhead system you know we're going to kind of cover this whole area so the pot size or the media inside the, the container is probably not as important as some of these things like plant height. Well, you've got a, a drip system. We're going to drip right in the pot. It doesn't matter. The plant is, you know, four feet high or eight feet high, whatever it is. It doesn't necessarily matter. Well, it matters a lot with the overhead irrigation system. You know, where is that? How are you going to mount this thing? There's going to be more infrastructure with the overhead, overhead irrigation system up in the air. And so how do we manage that? How do we get that sprinkler over the tree? Um, and also kind of what does that coverage area look like, I think is a big thing that I'd like to have a good understanding of. So what do I mean by coverage area? Do you have kind of these long, narrow strips that you're trying to irrigate? Uh, do you have kind of a more of a squared uh, field that you're trying to irrigate? Uh, do you have roads going through there? Most, most, most certainly you do. Um, do you want to have those or can they get wet or do you need those to stay dry? You know, maybe you need some dust suppression. Maybe you have kind of a clay base and it's really important to keep those roads dry. Or maybe you have a uh, retail uh, location or a commercial slash retail location where you have foot traffic through there in periods of time of the day. Or maybe you have some uh, greenhouse structures that you cover with plastic parts of the year. Uh, what kind of in infrastructures out there? What does what do the road infrastructure look like? What does this coverage area look like? And kind of what what are the plant height um, restrictions that you have? And I guess one way of thinking about this when you're asking all these questions is what do you have in the way, right? Because if you're having a drip system, you're kind of you know we're really localizing that water really closely. That's the that's one of the big um, attributes of a drip system. We're really localizing that water. Well, the sprinkler we're going to cover a broad area. So what are we going to hit with that water when we're covering this broad area, right? These are things we need to have a really good understanding of. So Michael, can we go um, back to that last yeah. uh, slide? Um, <clears throat> we did get a question here on the uh, the one on the top right. Um, is that just PVC pipe uh, that is, you know, held down on the ground with something that uh, on a riser and and uh, just the sprinklers on top? Pr probably. And I'm not even certain this is one of the sprinklers that we're going to promote today. I, I couldn't quite get a, I remember what the application was there, but yeah, this is a, this could be even like a turf head that they're using here. I'm not exactly sure, but, um, but yeah, that's, I would say that's exactly what they're looking for um, here is that they've got some sort of rigid riser, most likely PVC because that's readily available and low cost here in the United States. I don't know that it's always a great selection from a product standpoint, but it is pretty effective. Um, and you will see a lot of PVC risers, Schedule 40, some of the heavier PVC. Um, and I, I would suggest that's what's used here, although I kind of forget on that field. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to check on that. Thank you. So once we have an understanding of kind of what 
is all in the way out here in this field. You know, what are the attributes of the sprinkler that we want to try to match up to those characteristics to answer these questions? And, and I think really it comes down to primarily this water stream characteristics. What do, what, what do I mean by that? Um, I say simply, you know, how far does the water throw, right? If you have a big sprinkler, it's going to throw water further. The flow rate is going to be higher. The pressure is going to be higher, but you cover a lot more area, right? So with one sprinkler um, and also kind of that wetted pattern, what does that wetted pattern look like? You know, I'll talk a little bit of in generalities here because we don't want to get in the weeds too much, but, you know, usually a, a sprinkler that's throwing water a long distance kind of has a ring of water, right? We keep that water mass to make it go really far so you can, you know, you can stand underneath it and almost be completely dry and out there at the furthest distance is pretty wet. And so, you know, how do you make that a uniform pattern? What's your overlap look like? All those are based off kind of these stream characteristics. And again, there's pros and cons, not necessarily bad and, and good, um, but those stream characteristics are really the attributes that we look at, you know, pro probably um, first. Uh, also would like to consider droplet size. I'll, I'll lead into that a little bit later, but depending on what's in that container, you know, I think we're kind of thinking these big containers out in the field, but, you know, what if you're a small container inside of a, a shade house that was doing uh, propagation or seeding, you know, germination, then droplet size becomes really, really important. And, e and even media and think, you know, water droplets on the leaves that could precipitate out, you know, calcium and salts and things like that. Those are things to consider. And I'd, I'm also kind of put in this, you know, vibration, kind of this, um, these are going to be moving parts, right? The drip systems really don't have stuff moving around that much. Uh, sprinklers do, and that can cause problems. All of these things affect our, our uniformity, right? I put that in big red letters, because that's really what we're going to be talking about. Now, you know, you're really not going to have uniformity data on a singular sprinkler like you would in a drip system, right? It's, a, it's more complicated than that. Um, but all these characteristics, attributes uh, that I have listed up here will affect the uniformity data that we have coming from the manufacturer. So if you tell me what you're, you want to do, um, I'll recommend a spacing and a sprinkler. And it's going to give us a nice uniformity pattern, right? It's going to tell us what we're going to get, and it's going to be great. But all these attributes above it mess up my uniformity data, right? They mess me up, right? Just because it happened in a in a lab doesn't mean it happens out in the field. So, you know, these are attributes that I always like to consider um, when making a product selection, because most likely you'll be able to find a variety of products that will meet the design criteria, but some of these attributes will mess up your uniformity. And uniformity is, is super, super important in these um, container applications because they are individual containers, right? Very much like the drip system, um, whatever goes in that bucket in that container is all you get, right? Not like it's out in the field where the roots could um, and would migrate towards area that are getting a little bit more water than the others. And maybe even some uniformity would never show up because the plant is able to compensate for that. Your root structure is not going to be like that in the container. Whatever you get in there is what you get. So if you get some variation, it's going to show up very quickly. And you see that in a lot in these flowers and things like that. You see it very quickly in those short term uh, crops, and you will see it in your, your longer term crops as well. Yeah, the other uh, uh, degree of difficulty comes with uh, people moving the pots uh, and, and not putting them back in, this, in the correct area. I, I see that as a challenge too. That's correct, right? You can, you know, when we're doing these uniformity calculations, we're assuming it's in a lab, and, and we can put some parameters in there to kind of distort it a little bit, but Realistically, you're starting in a perfect ideal environment in a, in, a, in a completely flat surface, no wind, and you're considering the whole area. That's not what this container is like. So you have to, these attributes kind of amplify that, I think, in these, in these applications. Yeah. So what, what do we select then? That's great that you're now you told me that we're going to give you some uniformity data and then it may or may not be helpful to us. You know, what, what are we going to select here? And, and I'm going to group kind of these product offerings kind of into three different groups. These first ones over here on the left, we're probably going to be the most familiar with, most people have seen. These are impact sprinklers, you know, the ch -ch 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 type of sprinklers that everybody, that I'd say most people associate with irrigation, right? That's what they've seen. 
Um, uh, may, maybe not so much anymore with landscape. You know, we've got rotors and pop-ups and things like that, streams. It's a little bit different than it used to be, but definitely 20, 30 years ago, this is what a lot of people thought irrigation was. So we're going to start there because there's a, still a place for this, right? And everybody recognizes that noise you made. I agree, right? Yeah. So um, there, there are. This is kind of old technology, but there are a lot of improvements that we've made to them. So, so, uh, and there's also still a place for this type of product. Um, then we're going to spend some time on um, our streamed single stream sprinklers. Uh, they're very unique and probably some of the new, newest technology. And then we're also going to spend a little bit of time on a smaller, what most people would call a micro sprinkler, but still can be used in an upright application, overhead applications. We're going to look at all three of those kind of groups, starting out with the ones we know the best, the impact sprinkler. So why would you use an impact sprinkler? Well, um, I'd say a couple of things. Here are some attributes that you'll see from these sprinklers. They typically have a fairly large diameter throw, maybe 50, 60 feet, not all of them, um, but they have, you know, a lot of nozzle sizes. So you get a lot of flow rates, you get a lot of different trajectories. Um, they have a relatively large droplet most of the time, so they fight wind pretty good. Um, and, you know, they've, they have made a lot of, of uh, material improvements here. You know, we've had a lot of plastic sprinklers um, that we use in impact sprinklers. And, you know, that plastic doesn't mean cheap and not any good. Plastic means lightweight, high quality. Mold, injection molds are, are sometimes easier to, to make really high, highly precise parts out of plastic rather than metal and having a machine and do all that kind of thing. So, so plastic does not necessarily mean uh, poor quality. And I'd say in most cases, it means as good, if not better quality, lighter weight, ships cheaper, um, withstands uh, corrosions a little bit better. Uh, but sometimes you just use these good old brass sprinklers, right? So they have more spring options. They, they rotate quicker. Again, these are kind of in the weeds type of attributes, but there's a lot of applications where these sprinklers uh, can be used. You often can get park circle sprinklers. So if you had a road that you could not get wet, you can stop and it'll come back and it won't wet that road. So a lot of different options here, um, a lot of different sizes, um, and, and they are kind of that pickup truck, right? They're tried and true, relatively inexpensive, wider spacing. Vibration can be an issue, right? You can't put this, some of these, a big brass sprinkler on a half inch piece of PVC pipe and expect to get good performance out of it. It's going to have to have a nice, solid, rigid riser, maybe oftentimes metal, not always. Some of our plastic ones we do use on some lightweight um, risers, but you know the vibration um, and isolating that can can definitely be something that you have to have to account for. So um, these would be great for any kind of low cost applications, uh, wide spacings, um, or when you need some part circle um, part circle applications. How's the? We got another question here, and it is uh, how's the uniformity with the uh, the big uh, impacts or these impacts. What is the um, I would do, level that you should expect? Yeah, 70 to 80 percent, right? If you start getting over 80 percent, that's pretty good. Um, and, and, and again, you're going to say, well, why wouldn't you go better than that? Well, at some point, you start, um, when you start overcompensating for one attribute, you can take away from another one. Let's say we take one of our uh, 5022 or 5023 sprinklers here. Um, these are really, really popular sprinklers. We use them a lot in pastures and things. Well, if we space them at 40 feet, they're fairly low cost. Uh, they have really good economic payback. But the uniformity, let's say it's 82%, so pretty good. Well, let's say, let me go up to 90% uniformity. Well, I might have to go down to like a 30 by 40 space in them, right? And so, okay, I go from 82, now I'm up to 86 or 7 or 8 or something like that. But I've got... 15% more sprinklers out there, right? So in a pasture application, if you're growing a Tifton grass, are you ever going to see 10% or different, you know, difference between 82% uniformity and 88% uniformity? Probably not if you're cutting hay. Right. And, and so I think that's where you start looking at some of these. You can get some really, really high uniformities with these impact sprinklers but you start negating some of the other attributes that they have. So I would say in general, a sweet spot on impact sprinklers is going to be around 80%. That seems to work pretty good. You get below 80, you're going to see some pretty, you know, get some dry weather. You're going to see some, some hot spots out there. So, you know, 80, 80% is probably a pretty good target for these, for these sprinklers. Yeah, that's great. That's really helpful. Thank you. 
So if we jump to the opposite side of the spectrum, we're going to look at the little bitty micro sprinklers now. So why would you use one of these? You, you probably would not use this to, to irrigate your Tifton pasture. Probably not. It would do a really good job, right? It's going to be really uniform. Um, but you're going to have one every three feet, right? Probably not, probably not what you're going to want to put out in the field. And so uh, these would typically throw uh, a smaller diameter. I have 20 to 30 feet, you know, probably even less than that, you know, maybe 15 to 25 is kind of your sweet spot for, for these. You know, if you're getting, you're trying to cover a distance that big, it's probably not the right sprinkler for you. You know, we're trying to cover small areas. Uh, small droplets can be super effective with propagation, um, germination, um, even have some cooling effects. Uh, wind can really distort these things. So um, this is, these are really not that different um, than a uh, sprinkler you'd see in an orchard application underneath a tree. You know, we do some different nozzles, some different specifications, but it's essentially the same sprinkler. And if you go by and have a windy day in California, you, you probably have seen half the water being blown on one side of the tree. That's why a lot of times we have a sprinkler on each side of the tree. The wind can really distort these small, small droplets in that, in that almond field or almond orchard. We're not that worried about it. We just need the water in the root zone, right? We don't want it all on one side, but it's a little bit ununiform on the root structure. It's not that big of a deal. In a germination application, big deal, right? Yeah. So, you know, having these out in the field is probably not what, you, what you'd want to have in this overhead irrigation application. Um, but in these kind of under tunnel applications can be really, really effective. Uh, almost no or, or limited vibration and go on a little small stake. You can see how this one's on a little PVC riser where it's perfectly fine on a little half inch PVC riser. Um, here it's on a, just a regular stake that's stuck in the ground. And so that's going to be your, your general application for a, a micro sprinkler and an overhead application is, is something with a really that small droplet size, high, high uniformity. We're going to put a lot of these things out, a lot of overlap, making kind of a square band of water from one end to the other. Our, our uniformities in here would be 90%. Uh, we, we would really, or, or more, we're really going to have to dial that in because of what we're trying to do with them. Yeah, the, especially uh, the uh, um, a lot of these have very few, if any, moving parts. Right, this uh, really adds to their um, attraction. Yeah, so, some have no moving parts. Um, most of them have a little spinner of some sort. So, so again, very few moving parts uh, brings the cost down, brings the wear points out. Um, so, relatively cost effective, but it takes a lot of them to get that uniformity that we're looking for. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. That helps set it, uh, the difference. So here's kind of sitting in the middle are these single stream uh, sprinklers. And then some of the newest technologies and a lot of these have very few moving parts. Some of them have like a ball bearing that makes them move around. So very simplistic design, pretty, pretty ingenious. They're almost all made out of, out of really high quality plastic. So the cost is relatively low. Um, precision is relatively high. One thing I'll bring out here, I've got some specifications on these. This is a Super 10 um, that we sell. Um, flow rates are only about one and a half to maybe three gallons a minute each, which, you know, that's pretty low. I'll just say that's low, right, compared to like an impact sprinkler normally has. We're going to run this pressure around 30, 40 PSI, so it's similar to an impact sprinkler, but our wetted diameter is still going to be kind of up in that 40 to 50 foot range. So we're getting, you know, a little bit lower flow rates. We're getting a really nice distributed pattern because it doesn't have that arm going plop, 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 right? Every time it plops, that plop is different, right? That spray is slightly different. This is going to be more of a single stream moving all the way around. Uh, really nice wetted pattern. Uniformity is going to be really good here. You're not going to get quite the spacing that you're going to get out of an impact sprinkler, but much better than you'd get from like a micro sprinkler. Yeah. Um, application rates are going to be lower. Uniformities are going to be higher. Right, so those are all good things. Um, and we even have this mini revolver kind of sitting beside it. It's, it's even got a little bit lower flow rate. It's like closer to like a half gallon a minute, maybe up to one and a half gallons a minute. But you still are looking at, you know, like a 30 foot wetted diameter at like 20, 25 PSI. So really low pressures. You're gonna have to have more of them out there than an impact sprinkler. But you still, you know, something like 20 by 20 spacing um it, it's it's not that bad right i mean it it, it let's say there's twice as many of them out there as maybe an impact sprinkler 
but our uniformities would be in excess of, of 90% with these. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You are getting more material out in the field, um, but there's very, very little or no vibration. So you can see one here, again, on that same little stake that we had the micro sprinkler, we got the mini revolver. This is out in a field, open field application, not in a container application, but, but similar. Um, similar application where uniformity is really, really cru crucial in uh, dust suppression and uh, cooling and, and frost protection. Uh, so you're getting a little bit of the best of both worlds here. It's, a, it's kind of an in-between product. Um, from a costing standpoint, they can be really attractive because the infrastructure can be permanent or it can be temporary. Like in here, you see that you've got kind of this tubing running on top of the ground where you could, in theory, could pull this out get it out of the way, move your containers, move your crop or whatever, and then roll it back out. So Michael, we have a question coming in and uh, it's this, um, are both of these single stream? Yes, um, they have a single, the, the Super 10 has th this part revolves on the, this top red part revolves on the Super 10. The, the uh, mini revolver has kind of a more of a disrupted pattern. Um, we have a lot of information on our website, it has some videos and things like that, YouTube channel, you can check those out. It has a little bit more of a disruptive pattern than the, than the Super 10. Super 10, again, is a little bit bigger. So it's trying to get a little bit more distance. You'll see a little bit better, more defined stream of that. Um, the, the, the mini revolver, the best thing I can describe it to that you may have seen um, is like a, um, a rotator in your yard, you know, that pops up and throws that ro yeah. single rotating pattern. It's not that dispersed, but you'll see a lot of those have a very dispersed pattern, kind of moves at that kind of speed. That would be similar, but a lot less water, right? Th this is about, you know, maybe a, a fourth of the water that a lot of those rotator sprinklers put out in kind of the same area, but that would be similar to what the pattern looks like um, that you might've seen just driving down the road. Right. Okay. And then, um, um, so then we, you have this image here in strawberries. Uh, so do some growers use a mini revolver uh, or some type of uh, uh, sprinkler like you're showing now, plus a drip in addition to, I mean, are they using both? Yeah. And this, in this application, they're using the, the mini revolver for cooling dust suppression, frost protection, something like that. And the drip system would actually be doing the irrigating. Um, so again, all these sprinklers can be used in an overhead irrigation. You know, you talk about that, the attributes that you could use here in a strawberry field, you wouldn't necessarily use the, um, the mini revolver or any of them for, for irrigation purposes. But when you talk about overhead irrigation and the versatility that they can be, then, then yeah, I mean, you can get multiple um, uh, benefits or different types of um, you know, benefits from the same type of system, right? A, a system that offers cooling could also offer irrigation or frost protection, and that's not uncommon to see some of that in, in some fruit crops. So all these could be used in a nursery application where we're really trying to, you know, make sure we get the same amount of water in all these different containers. Um, but you could throw them all out in the field as well, like open field, whether that's pasture or you know, you could look at like uh, vegetable crops or strawberries, you know, all those things that need overhead irrigation. These same products can be used for that, that would be used in a nursery or container application as well. Yeah, okay, very helpful. Yeah, thank you. So here you can kind of see the breadth of the product line, kind of back how they fit together. On the far left is our impact sprinklers, uh, very tried and true, very good technology. Um, we got part circle options there. We've got material options. We've got brass. We've got plastic. We've got brass and plastic mixtures, pl brass with plastic nozzles, um, caps to keep frost protection off the spring, you know, freezing off the spring, fast rotation, slow rotation, part circles. We've got all kinds of options over here. Um, kind of here on the right side, we've got these lower volume, highly uniform sprinklers for propagation, cooling, those type of um, uh, germination, those type of applications, not as good out in the field because of the environmental things that can happen, wind and um, crop height and those type of things. And then kind of here in the middle, you have a hybrid of sorts that will help bridge the gap. We see a lot more of the market going towards these higher, higher uniformity, uh, more versatile sprinkler options. So um, these are two of our most popular products here. 
um, because they, because of their versatility and kind of their higher uniformity that they offer over some of their some of the other product lines. Yeah, so do those come in a part circle uh, also, or do you always have to buy them in a 360? That's a great question. Th these are only offered in a 360 degree. Um, some people will have deflector plates and things like that that they put on this, so like a, a road guard is what they call it to keep the water from spraying. That's not a bad way of doing it, um, but it also kind of messes with some of your uniformity. And so you have to be a little bit careful there. There's usually ways to design around that a little bit better than putting one of the road guards, I, although they are used and they do have, I've used them in some designs. They're just a little bit, uh, you don't want to make that a, an everyday practice most of the time. It's a little bit hard to hard to design around those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, and as always, there's my contact information on the last page. So reach out to me. My phone number, email address is there. Uh, on the Jane website, you'll see all the resources. Uh, a lot of these sprinklers have their own product literature. Uh, Mini Revolver does, has, and we also have micro sprinkler product literature, uh, impact sprinkler product literature. So it's a lot more information, technical details. Also, like on the on the uh, uh, website, you'll find videos. Uh, may, you get on YouTube and, and Google any of these Super 10 Mini Revolver um impact sprinklers right you can learn a lot but you can see a little bit more about how that how the patterns look and what some of the applications look like yeah well michael what a great job you did today and uh thank you so much for putting your contact information at the end uh, really want to encourage all of you that are watching to reach out to michael he uh, he likes getting the questions he likes uh, helping he likes the challenges and uh so uh so please do that and that's really a, a generous offer uh re really appreciate that so I wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody who joined us today as well, uh, really clearing up this nursery greenhouse container situation for me. I know I'm, uh, I'm a lot better off today than I was uh, a couple uh, webinars ago when, uh, when I didn't know this. So, uh, so thank you. Uh, and uh, thanks for spending some of your day with us. Remember, you can see all of our more than 200 trainings at the janesusa.com website forward slash trainings or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. I love that uh, people are out there in the work world, listening, educating themselves on sustainability and water management. That uh, that helps us to get up uh, every day and do the work we want to do. So uh, uh, that that's great. So again, Michael, thanks again. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, and thanks to all of you. Uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll see you on Friday. Thank you.